What comes to your mind first when you think of poisons? For most, it would be potassium cyanide, one of the most potent and lethal poisons around. You may remember the investigation surrounding the assassination of Rajiv Gandhi where the prime accused walked around with tiny vials of this poison around their neck like a necklace which they would consume when they had no way to escape. People are often said to succumb to their deaths within seconds of ingestion of cyanide. Is it really so? And what does this deadly poison taste like? In fact, when I was in school, I had heard a story where a scientist wanted to find out how potassium cyanide tasted like, so he took some cyanide and sat with a pen and paper to write its taste before he died. His suicide note only contained the letter S because he died so fast. The letter S could have stood for sweet, salty or sour. I don't know how true this story is, but there is another story that suggests that we finally may have found the answer. So in today's episode, we will look at what cyanide tastes like and how does it act on the body and how does it kill so fast. If any of you thought that I was about to consume cyanide like I did with Harpicum toilettialis experiment, I am sorry to disappoint you. I can try all those bravado with pseudoscience because we know it doesn't work. But with actual science, we cannot take that risk because damn it, it works. Welcome to Pale Blue Thoughts, the channel which promotes scientific temper and denounces pseudoscience. The term cyanide refers to any chemical containing a carbon-nitrogen or CN bond. What is interesting is that many substances contain cyanide but not all of them are deadly. Sodium cyanide, potassium cyanide, hydrogen cyanide and cyanogen chloride are lethal but thousands of compounds called nitrites contain the cyanide group but aren't as toxic. Cyanide works by interfering with a subtle chemical mechanism in our cells. It essentially prevents cells from using oxygen to make energy. Our cells need energy and that energy comes from the sugars in our food. This process is called cell respiration which is the chemical reaction of our cells using oxygen from the air we breathe to free up energy from sugar. So when cyanide molecules are introduced into the system, it throws off the cell's mechanism of respiration. The cyanide molecules look like oxygen to the parts of the cell responsible for respiration like the mitochondria, confusing our cells into latching onto the poison in hopes of energy. The mitochondria are then unable to produce the energy carrier adenosine triphosphate or ATP. This results in tissues that require this form of energy like the heart muscle cells and nerve cells to quickly exhaust all of their energy and with no replacement, they begin to die. When these cells die, the victim dies. If poisoned with this deadly chemical, the individual's diaphragm will begin to slow down in contractions, leaving the victim gasping for air. Skeletal muscles in the face, arms and body will also begin to seize up, making the person twist and tighten. Finally, the heart will beat less and less until it stops completely, resulting in a cardiac arrest. One reason cyanide gains such a bad name is that the victim is entirely conscious during the whole ordeal. They can actually feel every muscle in their body start to tense and all they can do is to wait for a few minutes for it all to be over. Eventually the victim will pass out and when their brain shuts down from lack of oxygen, it is all finally over. There are many wrong views about the victims dying as soon as the cyanide touches their tongues. However, it doesn't happen that way. It is not an easy death as it is made out to be, but a very painful one. The process can be quick, however, it depends on the amount of poison administered. If given a lethal amount, it can last from 2 to 5 minutes. Cyanide is able to kill so fast because the molecules are exceptionally small and can dispense throughout the entire body very quickly, affecting all major organs and tissues in a short amount of time. Cyanide is more harmful to the heart and the brain than to other organs because the heart and brain use a lot of oxygen. The extent of poisoning caused by cyanide depends on the amount of cyanide a person is exposed to, the route of exposure and the length of time that a person is exposed. The main way for cyanide to enter the body is through the inhalation and ingestion. The average lethal dose or LD50 value for potassium cyanide is between 200 to 250 milligrams. Breathing cyanide gas causes the most harm than ingestion. Cyanide gas is most dangerous in enclosed places where the gas will be trapped but the gas evaporates and dispenses quickly in open areas. So if you think you have inhaled the gas, go to an open area with a lot of fresh air immediately. But how would we know we are inhaling potassium cyanide? 
the hydrogen cyanide gas released by potassium cyanide has a distinctive smell of bitter almonds. Some others describe a musty old sneaker smell, but a large proportion of people cannot detect it. The ability to smell it depends on your genetics. There are some antidotes that can work to neutralize the poison if administered very quickly after ingestion or inhalation. Amyl nitrate, sodium nitrate for ingestion and sodium thiosulfate for poisoning through inhalation are antidotes for cyanide toxicity. Now there are many everyday items that we eat and use that contain cyanide in small quantities. Cyanides can be produced by certain bacteria, fungi and algae. Cyanides are also found in cigarette smoke, in vehicle exhaust and when burning synthetic products such as plastics. More interestingly, it is also found in foods such as spinach, bamboo shoots, almonds or badams and lima beans. It is also found in the seeds of apples, apricots and peaches. Another important and much consumed food product which contains cyanide is cassava or tapioca. Cassava contains cyanogenic glycosides which can result in fatal cyanide poisoning if not properly detoxified by soaking, scraping and cooking before being consumed. Of course, anything becomes a poison based on the LD50 values and all of these food products contain very mild quantities so you're not likely to fall down and die if you ate an apple seed by mistake for instance. There has been many famous victims who have died after consuming potassium cyanide. The first person who comes to my mind is none other than Alan Turing who is called the father of computer science and artificial intelligence. He was one of the heroes of the Second World War as Turing played a crucial role in cracking intercepted coded messages that enabled the Allies to defeat the Axis powers in many crucial battles. However, post the war, Turing had to suffer a lot including chemical castration because he identified himself as a gay. He died in 1954 from cyanide poisoning although it is not known whether it was a suicide or accidental ingestion. Adolf Hitler also contemplated to end his life by consuming cyanide but he feared the cyanide might have been tampered with to make it more painful for him so instead he shot himself in the head. In India, cyanide poisoning caught headlines after the members of the LTTE who were part of the Rajiv Gandhi assassination. It again hit the headlines in Kerala in 2019 after a lady named Jolly Joseph confessed to using cyanide to kill six of her family members over a period of 14 years. This came to be called as the Kudatai cyanide murders which shook Kerala. Now let us come to the taste. No one knew what potassium cyanide tasted like until MP Prasad, a goldsmith in Kerala, decided to end his life using potassium cyanide. Prasad was conned by a few people and lost a small fortune. Now, Potassium cyanide is often used in the extraction of gold, so the goldsmith had access to it. So in 2006, Prasad decided to check into a hotel, mix the cyanide with some alcohol and stirred it with the back of the same pen he was using to write the note. Police reportedly deduced that Prasad accidentally chewed the end of the pen with which he mixed the cyanide and that is how he tasted the poison before adverse effects took over. But before he died, he wrote a suicide note in which he wrote, "Doctors." potassium cyanide. I have tasted it. It burns the tongue and tastes acrid. Fourteen years later, his long forgotten story became part of a Chilean writer's book that got shortlisted for the 2021 Booker Prize, When We Cease to Understand the World by Benjamin Labatut. We don't know for sure whether what Prasad wrote was true as he died, but this is perhaps the only recorded case of anyone recording the taste of the poison in any manner before dying. So to answer the question finally, the taste of potassium cyanide from what we know so far is bitter and acrid. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please share this video with your friends so that they get the knowledge too. If you have subscribed to the channel and not yet pressed the bell icon and I know 80% of you have not done that, please do it after watching this video so that you don't miss any upcoming videos. If you are new to this channel and you like learning about everyday science then please head over to the videos or playlist section and you will find around 150 videos promoting scientific temper and criticizing many pseudoscience. I shall be back real soon with another video based on science. Until then, it's bye bye from Pale Blue Thoughts.